I'm Mr Parker and this is question 9 on the OCR Core 2 paper from June 2014. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here or check in the video description. The diagram shows part of the curve y equals negative 3 plus 2 root x plus 4. The point P, 5, 3 lies on the curve. Region A is bounded by the curve, the x-axis, the y-axis and the line x equals 5. Region B is bounded by the curve, the y-axis and the line y equals 3. Use the trapezium rule with two strips, each of width 2.5, to find an approximate value for the area of region A, giving your answer correct to three significant figures. In order to find an approximate value for the area underneath this curve, we're going to draw two trapezia, each of width 2.5, and find the total area of both trapezia. You can notice here it's an approximation because there's a little bit in between the tops of the trapezia and the curve that we're not going to be including when we do this. So it's not an exact value and that's why we've got this approximately equal sign here. So in the formula, first of all we need a half of h. h just stands for the height of the trapezia. Our trapezia are on the side here, so the height here is what they're referring to in the question as the width. So the height of the trapezia is 2.5. The y values in this formula here represent the lengths of the parallel sides within the trapezia. And all we do to find the y values is take the x values and substitute them into our equation to find out what y would be. So let's start by filling in this table over here with our x values. We've got x equals 0, which is down here. We've got x equals 2.5. And we've got x equals 5. But I've written them in a slightly different order. I've separated out 0 and 5 and put 2.5 on its own. And the reason for that is, in the formula, you add together the first and last y value, 0 and n, and you do two lots of all the other values in between. And the reason is that this side is contained within both trapezia, so it's used twice. And that will be the same for all of the middle sections if you split it up into more than two strips. So to find the value of y when x equals 0, we substitute x equals 0 into this formula. That means we get the square root of 4, which is 2. Multiply that by 2 is 4, so we're doing minus 3, add 4, so that gives us 1. When x equals 5, we get square root of 9, which is 3. Multiply it by 2, that gives us 6, so we've got negative 3 plus 6 gives us 3. When we substitute in 2.5, we get the square root of 6.5, which is a third. So we aren't going to work that bit out yet, we're just going to write it as minus 3 plus 2 root 6.5. Now that we've filled in this table, we're in a position where we can just substitute numbers into the formula down here. So to find an approximate value for the integral between 0 and 5 of minus 3 plus 2 root x plus 4, we're going to get a half h, which becomes a half multiplied by 2.5. y0 plus yn will be these two endpoints added together, so that's 1 plus 3. And we're going to get two lots of the middle y values. And in this case, there's only one middle y value, which is this here. So we get two lots of negative 3 plus 2 root 6.5. From here, all we need to do is put things into our calculator. And that gives us 10.2 if we round to three significant figures. As I'm going to need this value later in the question, I'm going to store it in my calculator as A. To do that, I press the shift button and then the store button, and then I press the red letter A here. In part two, I need to use my answer from part one to deduce an approximate value for the area of region B. In part one, we showed the area of region A was 10.24. So to find the area of region B, we start by finding the area of this rectangle here, which is just three times five and we subtract the area of region A, the part that we don't want, so subtract 10.24. As we've stored the 10.24 as A on our calculator, we just need to do 15 subtract A. And that gives us 4.75 if we round to three significant figures. Part three says by first writing the equation of the curve in the form x equals f of y, use integration to show that the exact area of region B is 14 thirds. So what we're going to do to find region B is integrate with respect to y between three and whatever value this is on the y-axis. First of all, I'm gonna start with my equation up here and rearrange it so that instead of being y equals, it says x equals. So the first thing I'm going to do is add three to both sides. That gives me y plus three equals two root x plus four. 
Then I'm going to divide through by 2 to get y plus 3 over 2 equals root x plus 4. Squaring both sides gives y plus 3 over 2 squared equals x plus 4. For the next step, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, but I'm also going to separate out this bracket. So instead of dividing everything by 2, I've just got a half of each term. So I get half y plus 3 over 2 squared, subtract 4, equals x. Now that I've made x a subject, I'm just going to simplify the left-hand side and write it in a form more convenient to integrate. So I'm going to expand out this square bracket. That's going to give me a quarter y squared. Multiplying the terms together gives me 3 quarters y, and 2 lots of that gives me 3 over 2y. Squaring the final term gives us 9 over 4, and I'm just going to rewrite minus 4 as minus 16 over 4. I've just multiplied the top and the bottom of this fraction by 4, and that's going to equal x. The reason I've rewritten minus 4 as minus 16 over 4 is that I can now combine these constant terms a little bit easier. I can do 9 over 4, subtract 16 over 4, and that gives me negative 7 over 4. I'm also going to rewrite 3 over 2 as 6 over 4 here. Because now I've got a factor of a quarter within each of these terms, and I can bring that outside of my integration in a minute. Next, before I can integrate, I need to know my other limit. One of my limits is 3, but the other limit is this point here. To find this point, all I need to do is substitute x equals 0 into my equation up here. So when x equals 0, we get negative 3 plus 2 root 4, which gives us 1. That means my two limits are 1 and 3. So to find the area of b, this region here, I'm going to do a quarter of the integral between 1 and 3 of the function I've just found down here multiplied by 4. I could have just integrated this, but the numbers would have been more difficult to deal with, and it's much easier if I just factorise a quarter outside of this integral. Next, we just need to integrate, so leaving the factor of a quarter at the beginning, I need to increase the power of y squared by 1 to become y cubed, and then divide through by the new power, that becomes 1 third y cubed. For the next term, think of this as y to the 1, increase that to y squared, divide through by the new power which is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, we get 3y squared. If you have a constant on its own, you could think of that if you wanted to as y to the power 0, it becomes y to the power 1 or just y, and dividing by 1 doesn't change it, so I just get minus 7y. From here, I need to substitute my limits into this equation, so I get 1 quarter of a third multiplied by 3 cubed, so I'm substituting in the first limit, plus 3 lots of 3 squared, minus 7 lots of 3. In the second bracket, I get a third of 1 cubed, plus 3 lots of 1 squared, minus 7 lots of 1. Now, I could just put all of this into my calculator and get an answer out, but I'm going to show you how you can use stored values in your calculator to make things a little bit easier. So before I put anything into my calculator, I'm going to store the first limit, which is 3. To do that, I'm going to put 3 into my calculator and press equal, so that that's the current answer, and then shift, store, and I'm going to store it as A, overwriting the last part of the question. Now that I've done that, I'm going to put this function here into my calculator, so 1 third, but instead of Y, I stored my value as A, so I'm going to put 1 third of A cubed, plus 3A squared, minus 7A. Pressing equals now, we'll use the value here that I've stored for a, and that tells me that this part here is 15. So I get a quarter of 15 minus whatever this bracket here equals. Now, you may have been thinking, why bother with this a? Because it's pretty easy to type this into your calculator, because now all I have to do is change the value of a. Now I can just put 1 into my calculator, store that as a, and then if I go back up in my calculator and find this function, all I have to do to recalculate its value is press equals. And it gives me negative 11 thirds. So I'm going to get 1 quarter of 15 subtract negative 11 thirds. Now I've got a much simpler calculation to work out. I can do 15 minus negative 11 thirds. That gives me 56 over 3. And then divide it by 4 giving me 14 thirds as I expected.